I am Gosha from Cosmic Agency. How are you doing? In today's video, I would like to continue with the theme of afterlife, the topic which was of your interest. Uh, I think it was a very important topic because just as it is important to live freely during this life, it is also crucial, essential, and even, even, even more uh, so to live freely in the afterlife or between lives and any other life that we have after this one because as you all know this one right now is just a, is just a second within the, the totality of our existence so it's very 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 important to gain the knowledge of what's going on in this life but also in life in the realm after this life I will mention some points that caught my attention uh, some points that I would like to clarify and maybe some points that caught, that um, I found are important. If I haven't mentioned all the points, it's not that they are not important, but it's because they were explained already thoroughly and to the perfection. The first point and very, very, very important point here is to clarify that when it is said that you go to the source or the souls go to the astral world, there is really no going anywhere, as in from point A to point B in distance. There are no places as we understand them. There are no distances. There is no time, of course. So it's not that we go through a certain place. Um, we just are there instantaneously we generated from within our perception field when we die we simply are at the source we always are at the source and it's not even that we are at the source we are the source everything around what we perceive is the source it's just that when we are in the 3d or even 5d physicality, which is a, a kind of a physical vehicle um, translator of that soul signal with the manifested material world, we, we somehow have this limitation or self-imposed limitation of not perceiving it all as a source. But once we die, well, we don't have this physical vehicle anymore. Um, it's it's easier for the soul to suddenly realize, wow, I am the source, I have generated it all, I am all me. And at that moment, that's why it's very important to carry certain ideas and focus uh, at the moment of death and before dying. Um, at that moment, that source that we are simply generates the experience for that soul uh, that is contained within the mind of that source of that soul uh, we simply instantly generate for ourselves the experience that we carry within our field of consciousness and focus and attention that we had at the point of death because as we, as we remember, when we die, we don't lose those learned and programmed concepts and ideas about ourselves and about reality in general. We carry those through. So instantly, from the field and the sea of consciousness, the field of source that we are, instantly we generate for ourselves that reality of that world, in this case an astral world, uh, that we carry as our frequency and point of attention. Because remember, we don't have the frequency, as Svaro said very well, we are the frequency. And as we are that certain frequency, that certain, that frequency manifests on the apparent outside <laughs> a certain world to match the ideas contained within that frequency field. I'm really, I'm really hoping that I'm explaining myself. Um, so from that source level, when we die, 
we instantly generate the world that reflects the ideas that we carry after death. So when we die, we still have 3D ideas. We still have attachments. We still have certain thoughts and desires. So from the level of the source that we are at death, we, cert we simply generate that experience of that world that we still carry within our mind. And that's how the astral world gets generated. That's how I understand it, at least. It's not that we go, we are here, and then we go to the astral, or we go to the source, as if they were all separate places. There is no separation. You are all everything at the same time. You are it all, and you can access it all, and you do. You are doing it right now. Um, it will instantaneously. So you generate the experience, the experience of the astral world or any other based on your frequency attention. And remember, there are really no gradients here and no these densities. Uh, this is just for our human minds to understand. Uh, but there are no places uh, within the source. There are no walls between those different gradients. Um, it's just another focus of attention generated uh, and it's just another experience experience for that soul to have uh, based on what's in its mind because all is mind. You are the animator of the world. You are that which is animated at the same time. And also, you are the animation process itself. You are everything at the same time. There are no gradients. It's just that your perception is there and your focus is there and it makes, makes it look as if there is separation. But there isn't. And here, some time ago, we talked with Aneka. That was some time ago because right now she's not uh, available. So. Aneka said here, this whole topic of 3D, 4D, 5D, 6D is logical. It's just that there are no densities. Or better said, there is one for each person. If you all see the same places, you perceive the same place, the same situation, it's only for mutual agreements. But in itself, I would, I would even say there is no physical world, one, one physical world and then the astral world. And now this is interesting. Everything is astral. And your experience of having a body and being in a physical world is also a part of that illusion. As being in the astral world, uh, okay, is real for that soul. Um, just as this experience here in the 3D is also real uh, for us. But in a way, all of it is the illusion and it's just um, <laughs> a, a generated ap apparently on the exterior um, mm, experience of the world as if it was something on the outside but it's all in our mind and here also we have asked do you always have to go through this astral for the dead 4d or depends on the focus and attention of each soul at death. Again, um, it's, you're not going through any specific place or really um, as if it's a separate place from you. Uh, it's just you are that place. You generate it. But here the answer is it depends on each person. You don't go through or you don't have to go through any astral place. You don't have to remember you always are free to follow where you want to be and where you want to go and where you want to be depending on your focus attention your frequency and your ideas that's where you magically are <laughs> that's how the astral world gets generated by the mutual uh, group 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 desires and focus of multiple souls at death so you don't have to go through any astral although a lot of souls they stay there sometimes maybe even just for a, for a moment for a few hours just to say goodbye uh, to their loved ones 
but remember you're free and you go wherever and you know it's very important to note also it's not just that you go where you want to go remember there is also a subconscious mind and um, a lot of accumulated ideas so that's why it's important to work on this throughout the life to generate a, a nice experience for ourselves after we uh, are done with this one. So let's keep in mind that we are all at the same time at once from the highest level. We only seem to be wherever we are at the moment because that's where our soul, our signal from the source that we are has its attention. It doesn't mean that we are not at all those other places. We are. It's just that for some reason that's where we are paying attention. So that's where we manifest and that's where we generate our world. Another interesting point is that Zvaru here said that whatever we experience after death uh, is based a lot of times, if not all times, uh, on our beliefs, on our previous beliefs. So some people will see Jesus when they die. Uh, and it won't mean that that experience is false. It will be real to that person. Uh, some people will see tunnels of light, uh, fam family members, uh, other deities in which they believe. So um, for me, uh, that would be because some people will ask, okay, what, what is the difference here? Which is the real experience? Which one is a false experience? They will all be real within the parameters of that person's uh, realm of beliefs. Uh, so here Aneka is also saying, for me, for example, um, uh, I'm not interested in religious experiences. So for me, that manifestation would be false, but it would not be false for the monk lady, for example, for, for a nun. Uh, and here she says, I am not interested in going to see St. Peter and beg him to let me enter his cloud to play his harp. <laughs> That's, that would be hell for me. So see, there's different versions of what hell is to different people and different versions of uh, heaven. Uh, so for me, that would be hell, but not for that religious nun. I don't need the reason to go there. I don't have to go there. I'm not going there. I will go to my astral version uh, f based on what I understand it to be. It will be my creation. That's very important. You go uh, to experience an uh, astral reality, or you don't, uh, based on your own creation. And that's very, 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 very important. That's like the most important point. You have the power to choose what you want to generate from within yourself because you are the generator and you are the generating field and you are the generating process. You are, you are it all. Okay, the next point is also very interesting and actually it's something um, that I was doubtful about as well. I wasn't sure how to approach this exactly. Uh, and someone asks this question as well, is, is this. If we generate the experience after death that uh, is based on our beliefs, okay, so why then do the Catholics um, reincarnate if they don't believe in reincarnation? They should just stay in the so-called heaven if they perceive themselves to be worthy of heaven forever without reincarnating ever. And now uh, Zvaru has explained this to us and we, I found this in a in the conversation that we had with her some time ago, after the, the, the conversation uh, to which I made a video about afterlife, and, and yes, and reading this again um, made perfect sense to me, and now I understand it. Okay, uh, it's simple. The Catholics, um, among other religions, are programmed, are trained, are taught, are educated, uh, put nicely, uh, to delegate their power to to external deities, to some external force. They are not really told that the whole the whole reality manifesting power lies within themselves, and they actually are the god themselves. They are praying to. Um, they believe it's something outside of themselves, not uh, not not that they they carry the power to 
create reality and to be the owners of that reality. So after death, they carry those ideas with them. So okay, they generate the kind of a heaven experience for themselves, they stay there for a while, but then what happens? They relinquish their free will, right, in a way. They relinquish their free will um, to generate their experience themselves. They believe that it's some, someone else on the outside who is going to show them the way, whether saints, priests, uh, whatever deities they have. So there will be manipulating beings coming down and um, telling them that they must go back to Earth for whatever reason. That option will be given to them. And as they are the generators of their realities, that's what they are generating. They are generating the experience of being led. That's what they are putting out there to manifest. And that is what is being respected. <laughs> the universe respects their will to be guided and manipulated because basically that's what they were uh, done to. That's what they experienced during their life. They were manipulated. So they continue because that's their wish. No one is forcing people to go to church. Uh, so they will continue to choose to be manipulated and guided by the external entities, external forces, who will come and tell them to go back to Earth for whatever reasons. And they, not knowing that it's them who choose where to go, uh, where they should go, where they, um, <laughs> yeah, where what should they, what they should generate, they will ob obey because that's what they are educated to be obedient and humble in front of their God. So this is the part of the conversation that I had about this and um, I asked why do the Catholics incarnate if they don't believe in it and the answer here because in the end they are brainwashed by the controllers behind death to go back. It is a lie within a lie. The only reason the Catholics and others deny reincarnation, that's like a side story but it's an interesting fact, the only reason the Catholics and others deny reincarnation is because around 800, uh, 850 AD, in the Dark Ages, the peasants were committing suicide in record numbers as they could not stand all the taxation and all the abuses committed by the church and their government allies. And I'm asking, I know, okay, but now they don't believe in reincarnation. <laughs> So I'm, I'm putting it back on track here with the question. Now, they don't believe in it and they should stay in heaven forever if that's what they believe. And here she says, but there is a problem with that logic. The I see and manifest whatever I want only applies when you are owning your power. And Catholics, among other religions, are promoting the individuals to relinquish their powers to them. So their free will does not apply as it is being seen or respected as in them giving away their free will willingly to the controllers. So that's what is being respected. Their free will to relinquish their free will. Their free will to be controlled. So here I'm asking, okay, so while in heaven they find controllers, some saint figures or whatever, and they tell them to come back, yes? And she says, that's correct. They are manipulated into going back. And that may also be another reason why they don't remember. In that case, they still see exactly what they wanted. They wanted that. That's what they believed. They believed in the external powers. So that's what they manifest. And they follow those external powers and directives. They are being obedient. They are creating what they believe. And that and their belief is giving their creative powers to others. Now, this brings me to another point. I saw some of you had the dilemma about this in the comments. And this is about the Archon traps. Are they there or are they not there? As you know, Svaru has always been saying, been saying there are no Archon traps. You are creating it all and you are making yourself to go back. But now, what does this mean? 
Does it mean there are no archons and no archons trying to trap you? Of course there are. There are archons and they are trying to manipulate you, just as it was explained with the Catholics who tell them the souls to go back. Uh, when she says there are no archontic traps, it just means that they are illusions. They are not really there to trap you against your own will. It's you yourself who let yourself be manipulated. You give away your creative power to those beings who tell you that you need to go back for this and that and this and this reason. Or maybe you yourself are your own archons in, in the sense that you, with your limiting beliefs, are making yourself go back to experience whatever you need, you feel you need to experience uh, going back to Earth again. So remember, yes, there may be archons out there, but <laughs> they are not more powerful than you yourself. You need to remember that when you finish this life. It's very, very important to start believing this and creating this for yourself after you die right now. Right now, you need to believe this very strongly. And this is how you will surpass and transcend whatever the trap they might have for you. You are the one with the power. It's like with that horse that is attached to uh, with the with the rope to the chair. Is that a trap to the horse? It certainly looks like it. The horse thinks it's a trap, but is it really a trap? No. Once the horse realizes its real strength, he will realize that there have never been any trap for it. Another very interesting point, and this is not something acclaratory. It's just. Um, interesting point <laughs> that I found very, very intriguing uh, when she said that um, we, all, we, as all our versions of ourselves, uh, exist at the same time, right? We exist at the same time. All our future versions and the past ver versions exist at the same time. So, in a way, uh, from the highest point of view, the most expanded version of ourselves, which is the source itself, there is no real evolution of soul. There is no movement and expansion and evolution of our path. There is no such a thing, because from the source level, it just all is at the same time. We are all it at the same time. The appearance or the, uh, the phenomenon of perceiving a certain um, gradual evolution of our soul is only available and only possible within the linearity, within the experience of linear linearity. That's a difficult word for me to say. Linearity. Without the perception of linear linearity, we couldn't have the experience as if we are progressing or evolving. From the level of the source, there is no evolution because all our versions already exist at the same time as there is no real linear time on that level. So we already have the future version of ourselves. We have the past version, we have parallel versions, and we can access them at the same time, actually. So the interesting uh, point she mentioned here was that the, le the sequence that we are perceiving of the progression of the soul is like the seed time on the ship ship's internal time. Remember, there is no real perception of time equal to everybody in 5D. Uh, so, so on the ship, they have the seed time, which is the group collective agreement on how to perceive time. Uh, and that's called seed time, ship's internal time. So it's the same here within our incarnation. Uh, our perceived progression is, that's the linear seed time from within this incarnation, the sequence. Uh, so in that sense, there is evolution and progress of soul. But without that linearity, there can be any progress of the soul. So <laughs> again, it's not contradictory. As always, Zvaru um, makes it clear from all angles possible. And in this case, the apparent contradiction is there is progress of the soul, but there isn't really any progress of the soul. And now I explain to you why that is. It's not an declaratory point of anything. I just thought it was a very, very interesting, interesting point. Okay, and the last topic for today, uh, something that drew my attention is when Zvaru said that 
uh, even though we don't stay in the astral world, uh, there is still a certain echo that we leave behind, that everything that exists and us, uh, all the people, all the living creatures, live, leave a certain echo behind. So I was, I was wondering about that and I asked her, okay, if I lived 1000 times on, on, on Earth, for example in 3D, do I have 1000 echoes uh, floating around somewhere in the astral? And she says, yes, from the more more expanded point of view, yes. But I asked, really, does the souls that um, that leave the body, they will have, um, if they live the 1,000 times, they will have a 1,000 of their echoes in the astral? And she says, even though those souls are not really there, uh, as there is no time, at some point of that time, they will they are still there as disembodied ones. But I here insist, but again, Svaru, if I lived a thousand times, then there will be a thousand of those disincarnate ones? She says, yes, you have them, the, a thousand of them, and me too. But as you don't really perceive them, it doesn't matter. You don't have your focus on that. You are not there, so it doesn't matter. But still, they are um, they are contributing, all of them have contributed to what you are today and you can still access their memory and the memory of everything you were and of everything you will be. Now this is very paradox, right? The memory of what you will be. Memory of what you will be. Because remember, the time is crazy in the, on the other side. It could be all reverse. Um, you could actually ask, you know, this is interesting, I sometimes do ask things of my future self. Um, I remember when I was looking for the name for my musical project that I have, and uh, just my hobby on the side, which I don't do for a long time now because I don't have time, but I remember an, an idea occurred to me, and I was laying down and I went into my mind, and what I did, I sent a message, I connected, I linked, I tried to, with my future self that already has that musical project going on and I asked my future self to send me the name of my of this musical project and I have no idea what happened but in that instant without even thinking about it like the words appeared in my mouth in my mind and I and I heard in my mind mentally the words dagger sol and in that instant, without even like thinking, okay, should it, is it good, not good? I just knew that's my name. Like I had the deep conviction, this is my name. I knew it. It was like sent to me from my future self. So yeah, it's 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 crazy, but that's that's how it is. Um, memory of the future self. So here I say, incredible. So I could access mil a thousand of versions of my echoes. They are still there. And she says, yes, you, what you are right now, you are the result of what you have been. And you can reach the information of yourselves there. Uh, in a way, and this is also very interesting, it could be said that all the other persons, all the other people are also your eco. As she says, what's the difference? It's just that they, they have buddies. They are people, but they are also your eco. As we are all, we are one, all at the same time. They are us. And here I'm like saying, okay, but I, I haven't, I, I was not them precisely. It was not my past life. Uh, and, and she says, <laughs> this is metaphysically so uh, complex, but yes, as um, a while ago, you were there. You A while ago, you were them. And you still are them as everything happens at the same time. You are still being them. Uh, but remember, she's talking from the highest point of view uh, and <laughs> uh, you always have to keep that in mind. She's trying to expand our minds as much as possible to the highest level possible. So yes, this is it. Um, thank you so much for watching. And thank you for joining me on this metaphysical exploration of what life is. 
uh, is is truly mind twisting uh, to to be able to think about all these ideas. But it's it's that's what makes life worth living. Uh, at least that's what I think. Next video will be a short video um, about mm, still some questions about the afterlife uh, topic. Okay, some, some questions I found and some answers, <laughs> most of all. And then after, after that, I will publish a short video about the souls of the animals. Uh, the short conversation that I had with Dor Kalel after my dog Ringo died recently about a month ago. So uh, that's going to be it. Thank you so much for watching, for your constant support. Thank you uh, to all the new subscribers. Hello to the old ones. And until the next video, hello from Poland, as I'm here visiting my parents. Bye-bye.